Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Saturday, September 21st. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Marshall game is today. The game against Michigan in 70 days. Yes, just 10 weeks away from the game. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about the Marshall game. One game at a time, people. Let's not rush anything. Buckeyes and Thundering Herd kicking off at noon on Fox in the Horseshoe. The big noon kickoff pregame show going to be broadcasting from Ohio Stadium before that going to look suspiciously like a big game, even if it's not exactly a big game when you look at the point spread or level of enthusiasm around the state of Ohio or city of Columbus, shall we say. But Buckeyes playing a team from a neighboring state, the Marshall Thundering Herd from just across the Ohio River in Huntington, West Virginia, joined by Kevin Noon of BuckeyeHuddle.com. He just wrote one of his signature tale of the tape pieces previewing the game. And Kevin, for a team that plays its home games as close to Columbus as Marshall does, it's a little weird these two teams have not played more than just twice before today. Yeah, and if you are a fan of the NC2A, they've played once because the 2010 game was vacated. That was a 45-7 Ohio State win. So you have to go back to twenty or 2004, a 24-21 win for the Buckeyes. Mike Nugent had to kick a 55-yarder inside of 20 seconds left in the game to get the dub. Um, So no, not a lot of history between these two teams. I didn't even really bother talking about the 45-7 game. Usually I'm like, well, I'm not the NC2A. I'm going to include everything. I don't know what got into me. I'm just like, well, we're just going to ignore the game that didn't happen because I wanted to just get to the point of talking about Marshall and what they are here in this 2024 iteration. And then on to conference play where Tale of the Tape actually starts to mean a little bit more because they're teams we know, they're players we know. You play them, you don't play them yearly or every other year. I mean, you're playing them once every couple years and there's a lot more familiarity as opposed to Marshall where I had to I, I had to look at online several times to remember what conference they played in because they've been in the MAC, uh, they've been in Conference USA, now they're in the Sun Belt. So... You know, the conference realignment's not just for the biggest of, uh, of of leaks. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago when I was in college, and probably when you were in college, that the Marshall Thunder Herd were a one double A team. It was one double A back then, but they had uh, several one double A national championship games in a row against Jim Tressel and the Youngstown State Penguins back in the early to mid nineties. So, yeah, it is. They they have not been a Division 1A slash FBS team for all of all that long. Randy, Mar- Randy Moss was one of the earliest FBS stars, of course, for the Marshall Thundering Herd. No Randy Moss. Randy Moss, Kevin, not walking through that door. So when you do your in-depth preview and you go position by position and sort of looking at the matchups all around the field, what is the area where Marshall maybe feels the best coming in today? Where is the area they stack up the best or maybe stack up the least worst in a game where they're probably going to be a substantial underdog pretty much everywhere? Yeah, they're going to be an underdog pretty much everywhere. We'll start on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, we all have talked about how Marshall is going to throw and throw and throw and throw, but the reality is their biggest home run hitter is in the running game with A.J. Turner, who has an 80-yard touchdown, and a 69-yard touchdown on the ground. So somebody that you cannot take lightly. you got to get him down to the ground as quickly as possible. Uh, You look at their their quarterback situation. They played three guys, but when you're looking at the stats of Marshall, you have to remember they played a legitimate opponent in Virginia Tech and then a lesser, 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 lesser opponent in Stony Brook. Uh, Stone Earl is is really their main guy, and he's only a 44% uh, completion type of guy, three touchdowns. The name that I think everybody's going to gravitate toward is Cole Pennington. Yes, another Pennington. That name should be familiar. Not Chad Pennington walking through the door, but but Cole. So you have a couple of uh, you know other quarterbacks that are much more efficient. But where did they you know where did they make their mark? Was it in the Stony Brook game? Was it did they get fat in a game that that Marshall won going away? Probably there. And then in the receiving game. They spread the ball around, but their 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 big go to is Christian uh, Fitzpatrick, 170 yards. So he's he's averaging 21.3 yards per uh, per uh, reception. Uh, two touchdowns, a 67 yard touchdown is as, as his longest. But you know that's kind of where they stand there. Then then we flip over to the defensive side, and something I will say is that Marshall 
does a pretty good job of getting after the quarterback. You're going to have to keep an eye on Mike Green, uh, number 15 for you with, with, the, uh, with the program in front of you. Three and a half sacks already on the year. That's three and a half of Marshall's eight sacks. But uh, I think Marshall is going to really be tested in terms of its defense on all fronts because they've not gone against an offense anywhere close to Ohio State's. Apologies to Stony Brook and Virginia Tech. Yeah, I, Mike, I, Mike Green actually leads the NCAA 1.75 sacks per game, three and a half over two games. I tried to get Tony Gurdman to agree that Marshall will have zero sacks was a bold prediction. He did not feel it was particularly bold. So perhaps a lack of respect for the Marshall defensive line and Mike Green out of Tony Gurdman. If they get the sack, make sure you let him know at Tony Gurdman on Twitter. Make sure you let him know. Uh, Tony, Kevin, this feels like the last one was sort of a degrees of not terrible for Marshall. This one might be a degrees of extremely good for Ohio State. Where do the Buckeyes feel like they may have the best, the biggest advantage coming into this game? Everywhere. I mean, it's, it, I mean, again, this is just a case of it's not taking Marshall lightly. It's just looking at the rosters compared to one another. I mean, okay, is is Marshall going to be able to stop the Ohio State passing game? No. Is Marshall going to be able to stop the Ohio State running game? No. On the other side, is is Ohio State you know going to be pressed by Marshall's passing game? Probably not. Is Ohio State really going to be pressed by Marshall's running game? Probably not. And even special teams. I mean, there's you, a lot of times Ohio State through it's going through the wilderness of special teams with the special teams coordinator for the previous years and not not having one now. You know, there have always been questions of are Ohio State special teams are they maximizing what they've got there? Well, Marshalls are are not great, and so. I don't see an opportunity for Marshall to really put a lot of pressure on Ohio State. Now, if Ohio State cooperates with Marshall, turns the ball over, Ohio State has no turnovers this year, but if it turns the ball over, then you just don't know what's going to happen. But it's it's going to be more than needing just to be plus four for Marshall in the turnover margin to be able to to be in this game to the fourth quarter. I think it's going to take an absolute implosion and malaise coming out of the open week and 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 maybe the Goodyear blimp, you know, crashing into Sea Deck. Maybe some kind of moderate to uh, moderate to severe uh, carbon monoxide leak. Yeah, that it feels like you're it feels like you're looking like that in terms of keys to the game for a Marshall win. Uh, Marshall's field goal kicker, one of three on the year, not great. Net punting, 129th in the country, also not great. So looking at this game. What is the most interesting thing? I mean, it feels like this is one where Ohio State's a 40 point favorite and you kind of go, yeah, that feels about right. So what is the most interesting facet of this game to you? What's the thing you're watching for? Is there a player you're watching for, whether it's a guy who's going to be the breakout star for Ohio State or just someone you're looking to see in terms of a younger guy? What, what What's the most interesting thing to watch for during this game? I'm really interested in seeing what is going to happen if Marshall does come out just in throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing and, and if they can come out and and roll out four receivers or something. And if you get to get Ohio state in positions of where you're having safeties out there covering, we know that BIA is BIA and that they have been just fantastic the last couple of, uh, of games, but can, can Marshall, do you know stress Ohio State there? Can can Stone Earl and his forty four point two percent passing percentage? Can they find can they find some little gaps in the Ohio State defense? Can is Ohio State reading its own press clippings and and thinking, well, this game isn't going to be meaningful. We don't have a meaningful game until Oregon or or or, or whatnot. And then on the other side, I'm just I'm just really interested to watch how Ohio State handles its uh, running back touches. Uh, Quinchon Judkins has a couple more than Trevion Henderson, who has a couple more than James Peoples, but they've done a really good job of of kind of keeping it all balanced. Are we going to see a point where they're going to ride a hot hand at some point, and that they're just going to keep doing that, or is are they going to Carl Schlockland, Chip Kelly, Ryan Day? Are they going to say no? We like where we have it now. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I think. I think I think uh, Quinshawn has twenty four touches. I think Trevion has twenty, and James Peoples has eighteen. It's something. It uh, th- that's what kind of the the splits are. Uh, will will they ride a hot hand? And you know, I I don't know if it's necessarily going to be all that important in a game where Ohio State last I checked was a thirty nine point five uh, point favorite. All right, so then thirty nine point five point favorite. 
What are you looking at in terms of a final score? What was your score prediction? I apologize if it's different than what comes out on uh, you know here on Friday uh, because I don't remember. I wrote my prediction on Tuesday, but I think Ohio State is going to continue to push very hard and is just going to keep scoring. Um, we're not necessarily seeing Ohio State taking his foot completely off the gas at the start of the fourth quarter. They're trying to get guys like Devin Brown and Julian Say and trying to get them some some reps running the actual offense. So I, I like Ohio State to win this one, covering barely, I'm saying 49-7. All right. I had 48-3, so I think we are very much in the same neighborhood there. We've all been kind of in the same general ballpark on most of these games, and I think been generally in the ballpark of the actual final score as well. So things this gets a little more di- difficult a week from now when the Buckeyes open Big Ten play against Michigan State, and then, of course, Iowa the week after that, and then at Oregon the week after that. So it's going to get a little more interesting each week as we head into the season and a little more a little more to talk about on these shows and, of course, at BuckeyeHuddle.com as well. Kevin's Tale of the Tape is a members-only piece of content for you there. So if you're thinking, hey, I'd like to read more about this and get a little more detail on all these different matchups, maybe get access to Kevin and our whole team of insiders to have conversations on the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby's Columbus. Well, friends, I have great news. Running a flash sale right now, just four ninety nine dollars a month for your first month at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Get access to our full team of insiders, all that great content, the great community, lots of stuff to talk about. And that's going to get you that first month all the way through that Oregon game. So one of the most hotly anticipated games of the entire college football season, you get access to all of us and all of that for that full month for less than $5. Not a bad deal at all. So we always have people asking, how can we, you know, what can we do to help support you guys? How, how can we uh, support your work and all that? If you just are someone who watches on YouTube, well, that's a great way to do it. Sign up today at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Get access to our full team of insiders, all that great information, and the puddle board presented by Jeff Ruby's Columbus, all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We hope to see you there. We also hope to see you at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle, both before and after today's game. Buckeyes and Markle, Marshall kicking off at noon on Fox. We'll have our usual pregame coverage. We'll also have our live postgame show usually starting a little before that game actually ends. Our post-game show will go on in the air a little before the clock hits zero. So the best way to find out when that is going to happen, when that show starts, and so you don't miss anything, is to be a subscriber. Hit the su- subscribe button at youtube.com slash bucket huddle and hit that bell. That way you get notified when that live show starts. So you can hop on there and won't miss anything. We will That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. Enjoy the football game. We'll see you after the game.